Welcome back to Stab the Dragon Productions. This is Friday, the 5th of November, 2021. And this is whiskey review number 8 here at Stab the Dragon. Tonight we're going to look at Okaneden finished bourbon with a spire soaked in Rar and Sons Scottish Ale Iron Thistle. If anyone is following closely what I'm doing here with these whiskey reviews, you will notice that I am reviewing mostly pairs of whiskeys from the Fort Worth area distilleries here in North Texas. I started with Firestone and Robertson Distillery and their TX Blended Whiskey and TX Bourbon. I've done two whiskeys from Blackland Distillery, the Blackland Bourbon and the Rye. I only did one whiskey from North Texas Distillers, 1835 Bourbon, because, well, I just didn't want to do another one from that line. And last week I did Oak and Eden's Rye and Spire. So now it's time for a bourbon from Oak and Eden. And this finished whiskey of Oak and Eden has teamed up with a Fort Worth brewery, Rar and Sons, to use my favorite craft beer, Iron Thistle. Iron Thistle is a strong, dark Scottish ale. So tonight I'm going to see what my favorite beer does to a good bourbon. Since I gave the history and background to Oak and Eden last week when I reviewed the Ryan Spire, this week I'm going to summarize that and then focus on the history behind Rar and Sons Brewery here in Fort Worth. So for history, Oak and Eden whiskeys are a product of sanctified spirits in Louisville, Texas, and that's about 30, 35 miles from my home headed east. But their headquarters, or flagship as they call it, is in Bridgeport, Texas, which is northwest of Fort Worth, going out Jacksboro Highway, about 50 miles from my home. So my home is, you know, almost halfway in between those two. The company was formed in April of 2017 and their first product was released about a year later. The company was formed by Joe and Jamie Gildenzopf and Brad Nethery with an idea of providing a finished whiskey that was inspired. They sourced their whiskey from NGP and some other distilleries where it's aged in Indiana. They bring it here to Texas and place a five inch spiral cut piece of wood. You can see that if I hold it up there in the light, just right there you go, you can see that spire in there. So in other words, they, they bring the whiskey from Indiana to Texas, and then as they're bottling it, they put these uh, spiral cut pieces of wood in there. And the wood varies. It could be maple, French oak, cherry, ash, depending on uh, what kind of flavor they're looking for. Those spires have been toasted inside a bottle so that the whiskey is finished in the bottle. They provide pictures on their website of what the whiskey looks before the spire, what it looks like a week later, two weeks later, and in, in six weeks in, I mean, it's, it's a completely much darker, uh, richer looking whiskey. Some may call that a gimmick, but others call it a genius idea. And so tonight's whiskey has a spire that has been soaked in Rars Scottish Ale Iron Thistle. As I said earlier, it's my favorite beer. So I could not pass this one up. The Rar family immigrated from Rhineland, Germany, to Manitowoc, Wisconsin in the mid-1840s. And by 1847, William Rar was producing beer in the German fashion as he came from a long line of brewers. William Rar's Eagle Brewery was the first lager brewery in Wisconsin. Rar constructed a malt house and soon was one of the major suppliers of malted barley in the entire country. And today, the Rar Malting Company is still in business and they're supplying 90% of the breweries in America. And they've got numerous patents. The Rar Corporation is still family owned. Family owned. It's got operations all over the world. Well, by the mid-1860s, there were three different Rar breweries throughout Wisconsin from three different members of the Rar family, Manitowoc, Oshkosh, and Green Bay. Now, since 2004, there is one here in Fort Worth, Texas. William Rar's great-great-grandson, Frederick William Rar, began the Rar & Sons Brewery 
just south of downtown Fort Worth in 2004. The RAR lineup has over a dozen different beers, including Iron Thistle, a dark Scottish ale coming in at 7% ABV. So I give this expression of Oak and Eden 5 out of 5 points for history because they joined up with RAR and their great history for this bourbon. What a great idea. Marketing and packaging, up to five points here. I do not recall seeing any advertising for this bourbon, but there should be some, at least here in Texas, I would think, uh, as this is a great Fort Worth product. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a team effort between Oak and Eden and, and RAR. This bottle is just as big and posing and classy as the Rye uh, and Spire bottle, but with all the current information about this expression. In fact, it's kind of hard to figure out what exactly to call this burden because the, the, the name is a bit long. Oak and Eden, finished whiskey bourbon, rar soaked, malted oak with rar and sons. Something like that. It's a bourbon whiskey, finished with a Scottish ale soaked oak spire. It's got a label batch on there of 0002 and then bottle number 0410. Small print on the side says... Uh, smooth bourbon is the cornerstone of this spirit. Next, we build upon it with a spire of American oak that has soaked in Rar and Sons Iron Thistle. This masterpiece is built with notes of malt and sweet caramel. This bottle is a 750 milliliter bottle with 90 proof, 45% alcohol by volume. This bottle has the same embossed hand with glory rays around it on the back that the Ryan Spire had. But on the front, there's a, a different sign that is round and has some kind of glory rays around it. But the inner design, I don't know if you can see that or not. I can't really even describe what that is. I have no idea uh, what it is. It's got a simple brown plastic lid with a rubber cork topping off the bottle. And you can see it, as I showed you earlier, that wood spire standing up in the bottle. Which is, I think, a bit startling if you don't really know, you know, the, what this bottle is all about. If you just come up there uh, in the liquor store and you see this, it's like, what is, there's something in that bottle. So, but all in all, I think this bottle is attractive. It's large and imposing. It's got nice labels, clear glass. It's very informative. Uh, uh, being able to see that spire, I think, is important. So I'm going to give the uh, bottle and marketing four out of five points. Composition. This is a 90 proof bourbon. One review I read stated that the estimated mash bill for Oak and Eden bourbon was 60% corn, 36% rye, 4% barley. In my previous studies of Oak and Eden stated that this is a MGP burden out of bourbon. I keep saying burden. It's not a burden to say bourbon. Hmm. Uh, but it's out of MGP and one place said that it was aged three years, but now everything I'm seeing says two years. The former clarity, when I researched Rye and Spire, seems to be misplaced now. Um, but for Oak and Eden, one, one key part of the composition is always going to be the wood spire. This bottle, the label says it's a raw soaked malted oak spiral. The, the website does not have this particular bottle displayed or talked about, which I found disappointing. So I'm, I'm trying to do research, and the website doesn't even have uh, this expression uh, listed on, on their website. You know, they've, they've got lots of other ones, but uh, this one I did not find. I did find just a couple of video reviews and a couple of other reviews about this variant of the Oak and Eden. Uh, the Whiskey Crusaders uh, on YouTube, they did an outstanding uh, job in their review. For composition, I will give this whiskey a 10 out of 15 points, which is significantly less than what I gave the Rye Inspire last week, which was a 14 out of 15. And, and the downgrade is simply because I couldn't find out as much about this bottle uh, as I did about the Rye, and particularly uh, the Okaneden website. I found nothing about it. Physical appearance of this whiskey. This is a fairly dark whiskey. Uh, you know, look at that. That's that's a, a nice light brown color there. Uh, 
And again, with the bottle, you could clearly see the spire, even though it's it's a pretty dark whiskey. So th this is one of the darker bourbons that I've encountered. And uh, the legs in the Glen Cairn are pretty strong as well. So it, it's got a very nice appearance. I'm going to say four out of five points for physical appearance. How does this uh, whiskey nose? What's what's the aromas coming out of here? My nose is pretty much useless. I can't smell many whiskeys, but uh, there, there's a little bit of the burnt brown sugar caramel smell, but it's a little bit darker, richer smell than other bourbons. I think maybe some malt is coming through. Thanks to that uh, Scottish ale soaked spire. I saw where some people were saying, you know, hints of tobacco or even a campfire smell. So th this nose is really not your normal bourbon uh, nose for sure. Uh, it's it's pleasant. And so uh, I'm going to say 7 out of 10 points for the nosing. What does it taste like? What's the uh, score for the palate? This is an amazing blend of rich flavors. You get some of the bourbon flavor, some of the beer flavor, but this is no cheap artificial beer bourbon combination. This is indeed a, I think, a remarkable product. It, is sweet but not overly sweet I and mean, there's plenty of bourbons that come across sweeter than this so it's got the caramel flavor there but it's a tempered sweetness muted a little bit gentle subtle you do get a little bit of the typical bourbon vanilla notes and uh, some wood but there's a nice spiciness to it with a wonderful slow burn that's pleasant. This this is not harsh in any way. And at 90 proof, there's a lot of 90 proof whiskeys that can, can be harsh. This is really pretty gentle. You, you do still get a, a nice uh, burn from it, but uh, th this is a uh, buttery, smooth, sweet, gentle bourbon that's that's got some maltiness to it. Uh, so I, I'm going to say it's a richer flavor than a lot of bourbons I've had. Um, in some ways, maybe even more like a scotch in, in some aspects. 21 out of 25 points for the palate. Mouthfeel. Uh, viscous. Oily. It's, it's creamy and buttery when you first start sipping it. It's got a very satisfying long finish. It's got some good whiskey heat, but it's not a harsh heat. This is not a, there's no ethanol burn to this at all. It's peppery and spicy. It really lingers uh, quite a while. This is it's one of the longer lasting finishes that, that I've encountered. So I'm going to say 13 out of 15 points for the mouthfeel and finish. Price, value, and availability. Uh, at Specs Liquor here in Fort Worth, $47.34. Goody Goody has it at $51.99. Total Wine did not have this variant, but they had lots of other Oak and Eden products. Uh, and since this one's not even on the company website and it's not carried by Total Wine, I'm thinking that maybe this one's not as widely circulated as some others in the Oak and Eden line. But when I saw uh, this at the liquor store and realized, man, this has got my favorite raw beer involved here. I, there, there's no way I can pass that up. So I'm, I'm going to say $47.34 was a good price, but the availability of it is, is a little bit less. So I'm going to say 7 out of 10 points for price, value, and availability. 
And as far as the, the, the value of it goes, I mean, as a craft finished whiskey uh, for just about $50, uh, I, I, I think it's a good deal. Final category, neat or mixer. I drink my whiskeys neat 98% of the time, but this whiskey, I think, would be wasted in a mixed drink. Uh, but then I know nothing about mixed drinks. You, you can drink it however you prefer, but this really seems like such a great, easy sipper with such rich flavors. I, I really recommend it neat. I mean, it, maybe you're not used to drinking whiskeys neat, but uh, you ought to try this one neat. This is amazing. So five out of five points there. Bonus points. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give it five out of five for, for bonus because this is a double local whiskey for me. Oaken and Eden is, is local. Rar and Sons is local. It's my favorite beer. This is truly a fascinating, rich whiskey. So, yeah, five out of five bonus points. So my total here is going to be 81 points. Now, I gave the Ryan Spire last week 82 points. So the thing that, that brought this whiskey down was the lack of information. The fact that I couldn't find it on their website. Uh, so, so, you know, information's important to me. So you know, that brought it down a little bit. But as far as which of these two whiskeys would I rather sip, that would be a hard choice because I'm a rye guy. I really love my ryes. But this is so interesting, uh, so good. That that would be an e that'd be a toss up between the two. Letter grade, I'm going to say B plus, and well that might be too low of a score. I don't know, but I'm going to say B plus. My recommend, if you like finished whiskeys, you've got to try this. This is really, I mean, most whiskeys are finished in a in a separate barrel. They move it from one barrel to another, like a port wine or something. Uh, but this is one of the, the best finished whiskeys I, I've ever had. And I've not had that many, uh, you know, granted. But th this is really good. If, if you live in Dallas-Fort Worth and you want to try all the whiskeys made in North Texas, uh, you simply cannot pass up this one in the Oak and Eden lineup. Uh, this RAR soaked edition is, is simply outstanding. If you like RAR beer, like I do, and you want an occasional whiskey, try this one. In short, this stuff is very good. The guys at Okanedon are genius, and this is a must-try. I currently have two bottles of Okanedon in my cabinet, and I foresee getting more when these run out. Well, it's time to sign off. Uh, this is Stab the Dragon. If you drink, drink responsibly. Do not drink and drive. If you're underage, stay away from it. So thank you very much. See you later.